Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report with your Sunday update from the Center for Research on Globalization at globalresearch.ca. And now for the real news. The annual meeting of royalty, politicians, business moguls and academics known as the Bilderberg Conference is set to take place later this week. This year's confab will run from June 9th to the 12th at the Grand Hotel Kempinski in St. Moritz, Switzerland. The conference is a yearly get-together of 130 of the who's who of Europe and North America, from David Rockefeller to Joseph Ackerman to Queen Beatrix. The group, which takes its name from the name of the hotel where the first meeting was held, has traditionally convened under a media blackout, with those members of the press and media moguls in attendance agreeing to forego reporting on the proceedings. Since the group's founding in 1954, however, a handful of researchers and independent journalists have worked to expose the group and its activities, and it is only with the rise of the online alternative media in recent years that Bilderberg has come to mainstream attention. The organization has had to become more open in recent years and now operates an official website, BilderbergMeetings.org, which lists the group's steering committee membership, agenda of past meetings, and press releases repeating the official justification for the group's secrecy. Bilderberg is a small, flexible, informal, and off-the-record international forum in which different viewpoints can be expressed and mutual understanding enhanced, notes the official press release from the 2010 press conference, before adding, At the meetings, no resolutions are proposed, no votes taken, and no policy statements issued. All participants attend Bilderberg in a private and not an official capacity. This description is not merely a reflection of the group's modesty. As the annual meeting brings together heads of state, finance and defense ministers, state governors, and other elected representatives with private business moguls, attendees are generally breaking the laws of their respective countries in engaging in the conference. Under the Logan Act, for instance, it is a crime for any U.S. citizen to negotiate with a foreign nation on the USA's behalf. As a gathering of some of the richest and most influential people on the planet, the conference is a lightning rod for criticism and speculation about the group's true purpose. This speculation is not unfounded, as investigative journalists like Jim Tucker and Daniel Esterlin have been able to predict numerous world events from discussions that their sources were able to smuggle out of past conferences. Such instances of prediction include Jim Tucker's successful 2002 prediction based on Bilderberg intel that the Iraq war would be launched in March of 2003. Daniel Estulin's on-camera rev revelation from the 2006 conference that the Bilderberg members were planning to pop the housing bubble later that year to precipitate a general banking crisis. And Jim Tucker's 2009 prediction that Bilderberg were going to use the financial crisis to work behind the scenes on the construction of a closer North American governmental integration, something that was once again confirmed by newly revealed Canadian diplomatic cables detailing how lawmakers have been quietly working on just such an integration for years. In 1991, a then-unknown governor of Arkansas was invited to attend Bilderberg, the year before becoming President of the United States. All right, here's the answer. I happened to be in Europe then on my way to Russia. I was invited to go to Bilderberg by Vernon Jordan, a friend of mine and a genuine hero of the Civil Rights Movement. And to the best of my knowledge, NAFTA was not discussed by anybody in my presence. I was talking to people who happened to be from Europe who did not give a rip about NAFTA. In 1993, Tony Blair attended the Bilderberg meeting in Athens, Greece. The next year, he was appointed leader of the Labour Party. On the campaign trail in 2008, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama disappeared for a secret meeting near Washington. Their private limos were seen entering the Chantilly, Virginia hotel where the Bilderberg meeting was taking place that same day. The Associated Press has learned that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have met face to face. The closed door meeting comes just days after Obama clinched the Democratic nomination and just one day after Hillary Clinton's campaign announced she's planning to drop out of the presidential race. Campaign aides for both candidates say the meeting was about unity. Initially, it was believed that the secret meeting took place at Clinton's Washington, D.C. home. Obama's spokesman denied that, but won't confirm where the former rivals met. Robert, why were we not told about this meeting and that the senator wouldn't be on our flight until the doors were shut and we were about to taxi to take off. Again, uh, 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 you know, uh, we had a desire, Senator Obama had a desire to do some meetings, others had a desire to meet with him tonight in a private way and that's what we're doing. We witnessed at least seven convoys 
of armed secret service entering the Westfields Marriott, and internal sources confirmed that both candidates did attend at least one meeting inside the conference. Earlier this week, I talked to Andrew Marshall, a research associate at the Center for Research on Globalization, about this year's conference and the significance of the Bilderberg meetings. Um, and so you have, uh, on the American side, one of the most prominent Bilderberg members is, of course, David Rockefeller, who was at the founding of the meeting in 1954 in the Netherlands. Uh, the meeting was co-founded by uh, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, who is the father of Queen Beatrix, who is a current steering committee member and also the largest shareholder in Royal Dutch Shell. Um, he sort of brought her into the fray, into the Bilderberg Group, and she has now been bringing her son uh, into the Bilderberg Group, and sure enough, he will take over for in the end. Uh, other prominent participants are Henry Kissinger, former U.S. Secretary of State, Zbigniew Brzezinski, former U.S. National Security Advisor, who co-founded the Trilateral Commission with David Rockefeller in 1973. Um, and you have uh, several other monarchs, uh, European monarchs, Queen Sophia and Queen King Juan Carlos of Spain are common participants. Essentially, you get a lot of bankers, uh, financiers, industrialists, the heads of the IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organization, um, and the major central bank chiefs. So the head of the Federal Reserve, uh, both the Federal Reserve System Chairman and the President of the New York Federal Reserve to generally attend each and every meeting. Um, and it's usually at these meetings where they actually decide who tends to run these organizations. Um, so you, you, there tends to be a consensus formed on who's going to be the next, for example, in the current context, who's going to be the next head of the IMF. I think that's something that we'll see be being decided at this year's Bilderberg Conference. So look for several of the uh, contenders' names to appear on this year's list, and you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be one of them. In recent years, mainstream news outlets that have been forced to address the increasingly infamous meetings have resorted to downplaying the meeting's significance, stressing that no decisions are made at the conference and that policy is not set there. This year, the Swedish news outlet TheLocal.se has been the first major outlet to address the meeting. In a piece entitled, Debunking the Mystique of the Bilderberg Group, the website quotes a Sweden-based academic who has written a new book on the subject, attempting to dismiss the idea that anything of importance is actually discussed behind closed doors. To suggest that they, the Bilderbergers, are consciously coming together to agree on objectives to change the world is wrong, Dr. Ian Richardson is quoted as saying in the article. This claim is particularly puzzling given the repeated admissions and revelations that the group has demonstrably been working toward consciously shaping international policy and using their members' influence to implement their policy objectives. Leaked documents from the second ever Bilderberg conference in 1955 reveal that even at that time Bilderberg was devoted to the creation of a European Union and a single European currency. Two years later, the Treaty of Rome, now officially regarded as the birth of the Uni European Union, was signed into existence by, among others, Bilderberg attendee Paul Henry Spock. In March of 2009, former EU Commissioner and current Bilderberg Steering Committee Chairman Etienne Davignon admitted to the EU Observer that Bilderberg had been cre instrumental in creating the euro currency in the 1990s. Just last year, former NATO Secretary General and two-time Bilderberg attendee Willie Clays admitted that Bilderberg attendees are expected to use reports from Bilderberg meetings to set policies in their respective countries. Despite all of this evidence to the contrary, look for more mainstream news reports in the coming days dismissing all talk of the importance of the Bilderberg Conference as conspiracy theory. For more on this story and other breaking news and current events, please go to globalresearch.ca. For more research and analysis by James Corbett, please go to corbettreport.com.